and welcome to another exciting weekend edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Theodore Henry, your host for today's Enlightening Journey. As we observe International Right to Know Day this year, we celebrate the power of transparency and the essential role it plays in fostering informed communities and accountable governance. Access to information is not just a right, it's the foundation of democracy. We have a lot lined up for you, so please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. We're still in the hurricane season and we want all members of our household to be prepared should one occur. This feature is for our children. Take a look. What am I? Cat! Yes, yes, okay, it's my yes. turn, it's my turn. What am I? Food? Is it a fruit? Apple. <laughs> Your turn. What am I? Goat. Go. Yes. Hey guys, it seems like a hurricane is coming. What are we going to do? We need to be prepared. What are we going to do? Don't worry, Lisa. We got this covered. We got this covered, Lisa. Don't worry. What are we going to do? Everything will be okay. Lisa, we got this covered. Don't yes, worry. Yes, everything Don't will worry. be okay. All right? Preparation, okay, please. Joshua. Okay. We are in the hurricane season and it's important to be prepared for anything that can happen. A big part of that is having conversations with your children about the hurricane season and what to expect. Counseling psychologist Jody Lee is here to walk us through the process. You start with the definition of what a hurricane is. You, you know, then you go into what are some of the features of a hurricane, what are some of the um, things that you might experience during a hurricane, so flooding depending on where you are, consistent rain, heavy downpours, um, lightning, thunder, and you get from them how they would feel about those things. Try to reassure them that we are handling the situation, and so by handling it means we have a family safety plan. So having a family safety plan would look like knowing the extent of prepare, preparation you need to do. So if, if you need to fix some things on your house or if we need to get materials to batten down windows, check that roofs are okay, not leaking, find a particular area in the house that would be a safe zone. So um, finding things that we will need to put into a safety plan, so, you know, the basics, water, canned food, um, making sure that our documents are sealed. So you would go through that entire process with them and you involve them as much as possible. But what we want them to know is okay if you are worried, but there are things that we can do to make sure that you are safe. And so, you know, one of those is to make sure that we are tuning into the radio and listening to the broadcast from 
um, reputable news sources. But with that also, you need to be careful as to how much the, you allow them to get that information. So it's important to maybe filter the information through yourself first. So you listen, you limit their access to it, and then you give them the information that they need in the moment, rather than them having access to all of this information, and it might feel like a little bit too much, a little too big, and they get overwhelmed. In preparation for a hurricane, you say to them, your devices might not work, and you know we might have to be preserving batteries, so we're going to go old school and we're going to play some games, or you know we're going to find little scavenger hunts around the house but find things to make it interesting for them find ways to help them to distract but not just be distracted but also to be connected to you so that they have that sense of security the other thing to recognize with children particularly the younger ones, is that their anxiety might come out through repetition. Try not to be irritated. Try not to think, all right, they're not listening and they're not paying attention. This is them trying to get security for themselves. This is them trying to make sure that the answer doesn't change, so that means things are going to be okay. It is also important to have all your emergency numbers of government agencies, families, and friends that you can reach out to. It's best to place these at a position where the entire family is able to see them or have the numbers on speed dial so you can make contact easily. Just because we, some of us came through the hurricane with our roofs doesn't mean we're all in good shape. We are now in the hurricane season. So as we stay prepared, here is some important information to help you prepare for whatever storm blows your way. Please go out and check your roofs because what I saw in St. Elizabeth tells me that even the best looking roofs are not altogether sound. Please check on your nails that hold down the sheeting. Please check on the lats that hold the sheeting and the lats to the rafters. Please check on your wall plates. Check on your windows for vibrations and stability. Check the roof for vibrations and stability. That is a quick stopgap check and firm up everything but with screws, not nails. Nails tend to split wood and create a gap where you could have had a bond. Go on your rooftops now. So it is important for us at JCA that our customers are treated fairly, right? And we know it's easy. I'm being frank, it's easy to blame customs for everything. But how do you verify whether customs is charging you or not? There's what we call a reference number, or we call it a C number. So if it is that you import anything, the de minimis is now 100 US dollars. So if you import something that is $99 and your courier is saying that customs has charged you, ask your courier for the C number. Go onto the customs website and check or download the mobile app, type in your reference number and you are able to see what the payment was. Your courier must provide you with a customs invoice. And if you have problems after that, send something to quick.response at jca.gov.jm and we will follow through because we take these matters 
very, very serious. Send a report with your detail, identifying who you are, what your import is, who is your career company and the challenges that you are having. And what we will do as the regulator, as the persons who authorize the courier companies to submit documentation on your behalf, electronic documentation, we will investigate. And I can tell you that our CEO has taken a zero tolerance stance against freight forwarders, couriers who are perpetrating these type of, I call them offense, against the customers. And there are avenues that are available if they continue to do these things, that there is redress and there are things that can be done. For example, we hope we don't get to that, but the commissioner has the power to suspend their access to our platform where these declarations are submitted. So we urge the courier companies, comply, treat your, company, uh, your customers well, give them the correct information, and there's still opportunity for you to continue to make a wonderful living from the trade. Up next, we share some tips to consider when planning to own a home. A review of the NHT's loan limit has been undertaken with the intent of improving the affordability to contributors. As a result, the loan limits will be increased to bring the maximum benefit in closer alignment with prevailing market conditions. Effective July 1, 2023, the general loan limit for a single applicant will be increased to $7.5 million. I feel that the my child is something for poor people. In a reach 100%, but it's getting there. That's a good increase because for persons who are struggling, like myself, can find it a little bit easier. Let me increase the chance that people can get for other house and can have things, isn't it? Pedestrians reacting to the news revealed by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in Parliament. As the Prime Minister stated, single applicants will go from $6.5 million to $7.5 million. This means two people may access up to $15 million to purchase a home. It's up to $21 million when three family members pull their resources together. Home ownership is indeed a big deal and all our loan offerings are geared towards assisting our contributors in becoming homeowners. And so we have mortgages under two broad categories homeowners loan and non-homeowners loans. Under the non-homeowners loan, one can purchase a home on the open market, purchase land to build, or you may access funds to build on land you already own. So for the build on own land loan, you own the land, as the name suggests. You have a title for the property. Or you may not have a title for the property, but you have what is called undisputed ownership. You have documentation that shows that you are the right owner, you're the legal owner of the property. For the homeowner's loan, this is where an actual homeowner who has never received an NHT loan can borrow money to renovate their home. For those going the route of buying, bear in mind that once you have decided to purchase land or any property, you need to be pre-approved for a loan. To get a pre-approval letter, you'd be able to do so by supplying us with a job letter that verifies your income and contributions to the NHT. The TRN, if you, you should have a TRN card, an NIS card, a government-issued ID, and your last two months pay slips. But if you are self-employed, then you would have to visit our compliance department and request what is called a mortgage memo. This is simply an electronic statement on our system that confirms to the person who will prepare your letter that you are indeed qualified and you have paid all your contributions on time. So you're ready to buy a property and you're considering an NHT housing scheme. Here's something to consider. The NHT will, from time to time, um, offer to its contributors housing solutions for sale. Now, if you want to be qualified for an NHD scheme solution, there are two main things that must be considered. One, where you live and work in proximity to the scheme, that's one, and the number of points you would have accumulated over your work life. So, 
the longer you are contributing the more points you would have accumulated and for every 52 weeks that you are a contributor you are awarded 20 points so that adds up over time if you are considering purchasing nht housing be sure to keep up to date with their website for all the relevant information and when you are ready to purchase be sure you have all your relevant data on hand so you're, you're, you're going to want to have on hand records of your employment issues. So first you'll say to me, Mrs. Smith, I'm ready to apply for my scheme. And I say, how long have you been contributing? And the answer is enough, enough years. No, you need to know when you worked at a particular company and for how many years, because when you are doing your online application for scheme, you need to be very specific. You worked at Montego Bay Club, 2000 to 2010. You worked at Dundee, 1985 to 1990 so you have to be very specific and for those people who may want to subdivide land and build with other like-minded individuals cluster housing has been renamed and rebranded and it is now called build nine okay so it's no longer cluster it's build nine so what is build nine it is a facility where we allow groups of persons to acquire land and the NHC will assist with subdivision of the land, splintering of the title, and installation of the infrastructure. The land must be subdivided into a minimum of three lots or a maximum of nine, hence the name Build Nine. It's an opportunity for you to create your own community. So you, you build the community that you want, you design the community you want, you live with people that you can be happy with and comfortable with. Sounds good, right? Well, yeah, of course. Ready, sign me up. Not so fast. I want to go through some of the things that persons must bear in mind when they're ready to own a home or they're going to buy land or you are going to buy a home or you're going to build on land that you already own. There are some expenses that you must prepare for. And so a sale agreement, you have to pay for that. You have to pay a valuator to do a valuation report. You have to pay a surveyor to do a survey on the property to ensure that there are no breaches or encroachment. So the property is not on your neighbor property and the, the house is not too close to the border, those simple things. In addition, you need to have the attorney fee, which is usually 3% of the sale agreement and sometimes more. For more information, please contact the National Housing Trust at its corporate office, 4 Park Boulevard, Kingston 5, or give them a call at 876-929-6500-9. Happy house hunting! And to close our observation of International Right to Know Day, we give you useful information on how to obtain a land title. If you are a landowner who does not have a registered title, you can apply for one now. A registered title is a document that indicates you own the land. And if you don't have one, another person can lay claim to your land. The process of registering for land titles begins here. Here are the initial steps you need to take. Step 1. Obtain and sign an application form as stipulated by the Registration of Titles Act. Step 2 is to obtain a statutory declaration, which is merely a letter from a local resident attesting to the applicant's ownership of the land. Step 3 is similar to Step 2 in that you must obtain a supporting statutory statement from two people who have known the property for at least 30 years in order to demonstrate ownership rights through possession. This is necessary if the petitioner lacks 40 years worth of documentary evidence of ownership. The fourth step requires you to obtain a current certificate of payment for property taxes. You will also need a survey checked diagram if the land is being registered by plan. After that, present any other document you may have proving ownership, such as a receipt, transfer, or probate form. 
Finally, you must pay an entry fee, which is equal to 1% of the property's value. You must pay this cost when you provide your paperwork to the assessor at the title office. You will receive an official receipt with the name of the applicant, the document number, and the receipt number printed on it. Your application number is printed on the receipt and must be used when you are contacted about the application. Once your application has been submitted successfully, you must save your receipt. Processing takes anywhere from six months to a year. If a rejection notification is sent out during that time, the processing period will restart if you want to reapply. Pay your property taxes, have your land surveyed, and remember, land titles can be used as a resource to safeguard your future and the future of your children. To learn more about how to obtain a land title today, visit the National Land Agency's website at www.nla.gov.jm. Secondary students, it's time to get creative for the JIS Heritage Poster Competition 2024. Whether you're a whiz with digital design or love to illustrate, this is your chance to shine. Design a poster using this year's exciting theme, out of many, one people. Prizes are up for grabs, so bring your A-game. Submit your masterpiece between September 2 and October 31. For all the details and the guidelines, head to jis.gov.jm. Don't miss out. Show Jamaica your talent and create something amazing. Miss Carol Rose Brown had called me and asked me if I'd be interested in having a shop on the Falmouth Pier. And I was very excited, very interested also. You know, the journey where the Art Center is coming from, this is actually a game changer for um, the center in the sense of the oomph that we need to move forward. These local made products that you see here in the, in the, in the shop here are all handmade, authentic by artisans from the community. This is a great opportunity that TEF has uh, having showcase, showcasing Jamaican artisans and also the Jamaican authentic art products. You know, our craft products are very unique and you know, it's different. Tourists react to our products that it, it brings a sense of you know awareness to our culture the look of our culture i have to you know give hats off to the team and everybody around the team that has played a significant part in making this whole venture um, happen it's long overdue we um we, our islands our shores are over over flowing with you know um products from all over the world except, you know, Jamaica. We, we, there's very few Jamaican products in our craft stores throughout the, the tourist sector on the North Coast from Negro to Ochi. I'm really honored, really, uh, you know, proud, overwhelmed. All the things that's in the good nature of what is being brought forward right now, Tuff, um, hosting this artisan's village um, it's going to bring a, a great awareness to the artisans themselves, to Falmouth, Trelawney. We need a sense of, you know, moving forward. We want to know that we're going to achieve. We're not just going to start something and not come to the climax of it. And this is a great climax for Jamaica, for the, the, the locals, um, the artisans, even the locals. When I say the locals, I mean the locals have a, a chance to to, to see Jamaican, authentic Jamaican products. It's a super, super significant thing to be bringing something from um, not just a country, but from a community that's world-renowned. Um, 
people, like, it's to the world, people. From there here, you know, Bob Marley, they say Trenchtown. From there here, any of the icons that they're familiar with, like Alton Ellis, Trenchtown right away. So, um, you know, the, the brand, it's, it's a brand. And the brand is very special to myself and, you know, to uh, the artisans that, that are producing or hand making these products. I would just love for everybody to, if you get the chance, to come down to the Artisan Village in um, Falma, Trelawney, and experience um, some of our authentic Jamaican products. Um, sold out of the Trenchtown shop and the other shops here that are available to the public. As we conclude today's edition of Jamaica Magazine, we hope you found these features informative and engaging. Stay connected with GIS through our website at gis.gov.jm and on social media. On behalf of the production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Have a great weekend. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.